Hi everybody, it's Jack Goodings again here telling the story about certain people in my life that I've not been able to speak up about before, so I'm doing it now. And I'm talking about my third stepdad at the moment and just going through the years. You know, what it's looked like and, and how I've experienced things myself. Like I said, I'm not a victim of this anymore, I was, but now I'm on the other side trying to articulate it. The gaslighting and the devaluing, they come in hand in hand really. So I'm just going to give you some examples. If I stuck up for him in a situation, he would shut me down. I guess I'm imagining is maybe because if I'm sticking up for him, then I'm undermining him, maybe. Another way of devaluing and undermining was he would talk bad about my sister and about their family as well. My mum would too. But he would join in and you know get me on side. That actually to me is a form of devaluing me because it's devaluing my family. He'd only been with us for a few years. I found a dog, a husky, I thought it was. I, I had no idea. It wasn't a husky. It's a lovely little scruffy old little dog or mangy old thing so i told him and my mum that i found a husky and they roared with laughter when it wasn't which is the thing that you do this is why you don't see that it's devaluing you join along with the humor it becomes devaluing when they keep bringing it up and how you're stupid enough to have thought that that was a husky and they put you down it's not very overt in an overt way you're the butt of the joke, basically. And they don't have enough respect for you to, or regard for you, to actually think, hang on, that might be a little bit embarrassing. That joke kept coming up a lot. When I came over from the States back to Britain, and he'd been over for a year or so with my mum, he'd been back and forwards. So obviously he knows Britain or knew Britain a lot better than I did, even though I'm British, was brought up here. He knows more about football, more about everything. But a strange thing is I came over and I went shopping with him for the first time. He was telling me where to get all the food and where to get all of the furniture, which in a sense is devaluing because they don't let you find your own way of figuring stuff out. It's like saying that you're not competent enough to figure this out. It's taken away your agency and if I said, oh, I've gone to such a place, it'd be why? I was not like, oh, why have you been there then? It'd be abrupt in the sense of like, isn't his choices good enough? Isn't his directions for you and his information and guidance, isn't that good enough? And it should be good enough. You shouldn't make your own decisions. And uh, it would be, well, I would do this and why would do that? And you'd have to listen to him. And again, that to me is devaluing. So why would I want to take all of his advice to not actually want to just see what choices I would make? Or even hear why I made some choices? Or even just be okay with leaving me alone to make some choices? It sounds really trivial, but it takes over your entire agency and you end up not having your own decisions, not having your own identity even, your own choices. You're making choices based on what he, what they have determined the choices you should make. I was very tired of being in the limelight over in the States for having the British accent. It got very tiring because you can't just settle down to being a normal individual human being. I was always the British bloke, the limey, you know, hey lamb, oh, you talk British, oh, do you know such and such, oh, say some English for us, I already am. So if you do that to people, you know, Americans over there, I mean, no offense to you, I know you, you know, you do it because you like hearing it, but it's, it's a little annoying sometimes, we just want to get on. So for 10 years over in the States, I was always a, um, a novelty, be a novelty so I came back to England I didn't want to be a novelty but I've got a bit of an American accent now I expressed to him that I you know I didn't want to stand out 
and bugging me. He said, well, yeah, you walk differently. I said, what? He said, English people walk on their toes and American people walk on their heels. Oh, and that gets you thinking, do I? Oh yeah, maybe I do. Nonsense. And that's devaluing as well, to actually get somebody to start questioning themselves. That's gaslighting, that is hugely abusive. But you don't know, you put your trust in them, because that's your family. I invited them in as my family. You know, he'd been he'd actually been part of the family now for then at that point for about five years. He purposely said that, and it was only after I'd said, well, I didn't want to stand out. And so he'd make the point then of making sure that I was different. And he'd highlight that. So now I'm not British standing out, now I'm walking in an American way of standing out. And it's just points it out. And then a little later on over the years, because he started gaining some weight, so what did he have to do every time? Every single time I saw him, in front of my kids, in front of my wife as well, I would always point out, oh, you put on some weight there, Jack? A little bit chubby there, Jack? And I was always looking after my health as best as I could. And I've been overweight, especially recently as well, and I've I tried to get myself back into shape again. I don't like being overweight at all. And it seems to me, when they're overweight, these narcissists, they want you to be part of that overweight club as well. I don't want that. You know, I don't want to be picked on. And when you speak up about it, they say, oh, you're sensitive. No, actually, I just don't like being pointed out negative stuff about me. And there are still certain people in my life, one or two people in my life, and the family who sadly we don't have a lot of contact with, who still pick points and wonder why I might get upset about that. And then they say, oh, it must be true because you get upset about it. Well, it's just not. And then come the hair. Every friggin' time. So, oh, Jack, you're losing some hair in the back there. So, oh, where, where? Maybe self-conscious, and then you go to get your hair cut, and you say, oh, I'm losing my hair, and my head, my hair's not doing as good as it used to, and it's going thin, and I'm, you know, and they make you really self-conscious. That's what he did to me, and it's very devaluing, and it really is gaslighting. And I'd be feeling a certain part of my head, which I think, oh yeah, it's getting a bit thin. Well, a few years ago, I actually did notice that my hair was going thin, but you mention it to other people and they say, oh, nothing wrong with it. So why would the people who are in your family, who's supposed to be loving to you and caring and want you to feel okay about yourself, actually bringing you down, actually pointing things out? It's not good. But there's certain other things that he used to do as well. You know, like I would not want to eat. Why? I say why. I just don't want to eat a whole lot. No, I don't want that extra pudding. And they kind of force it on you. Actually, what he was doing was overfeeding. Intentionally. Very abusive. Here's one. I needed a job. And I was desperate at the time to actually get on to the internet while I'd taken my son down to visit him and my mum. And the only place I could get internet access was in the communal room where they stayed at the sheltered housing. And there's a guest room there, you see, that I used to rent out for my kids and my, my wife and me and later on my partner and me. And later on, just me. And so my boy was very ill at one time, about 17 I think he was at the time, and he was lying at sleeping. I thought, well, I'll go into this communal hall. The thing is, my stepdad had told me, don't go in that communal hall on my own. It's not as if I was gonna do anything. I went in the communal hall in the dark, sitting right by the wall so nobody could see me, searching through the internet, signing up for supply teaching agencies. Well, I didn't realize it actually set the fire alarm off quietly. I called my mum up on the phone because the manager came up, said, oh, you know, what have you done? What have you done? I was really scared. And I was gonna be late for dinner. I knew that dinner was gonna be on and help, you know, come on up. My mum came up and she was saying to the manager, oh, you know, it's just Jack. Jack does these silly things. I said, no, mum. I haven't done anything wrong. Oh, just go along with it, Jack. No, Mum, I haven't done anything wrong. I came downstairs with her, 
at my son as well and brought him downstairs too. Dinner is being served because my stepdad had made the dinner and I was expected to be there on time and not keep them waiting. And my mum was going on about, oh, you know, you should have just said, so I said, no, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't do anything. And she then starts getting on to me about you know, how, well, oh, you're so good with words and everything. And I was standing up for myself, finally, for once. And he turned around while he's bringing out my dinner and my son is in the room. And he says, that's my effing wife you're talking to. Thank you very much, it's my mum as well. And I finally found inside of myself the courage and the strength and I didn't respond because I didn't want to make a show of it. I wanted to set a good example in front of my son and I didn't want him to have to go through it either. And I just put my plate down calmly and I looked at him and I said, you will not swear at me, especially in front of my son. And I stood up and I walked out and I went upstairs and I stayed in that guest house. No food, no water either. It's just this yucky tap water. So stressed out, I was trying to manage it inside. There's another way in which they devalue you as well. For one thing that they had a go at you in front of people as well so they're you know putting you down in front of people which is really so disrespectful but then also jumping in between the conversation with you and your mum or your loved one with you and somebody else and then they are getting in the way so that you can't have that conversation or even just a relationship with the other person and that is devaluing you, devaluing who you are, and devaluing a very disrespectful. Oh, also, he'd go around saying that I'm his son. I wasn't his son. He's got two sons. One's now dead, and the other one that he doesn't have anything to do with. I'm not his son, and I never was. And also, people who I loved, he talked really bad about people. I think I mentioned that with my sister towards the beginning of this video. He would talk bad about the people I had decent relationships with. And that is not only devaluing my loved ones, but it's also totally disrespecting and devaluing my relationships with me forming relationships with others and how my relationship is. It would be like, that's devalued now. I'm wanting that to be de devalued. Just, ugh. Yuck, bad, bad, bad energy. Gross energy. We're supposed to not only tolerate, but get along with and look after them in times of need. If I couldn't afford to go over there, which is a four and a half hour journey, it's shame. You know, to the point of guilting me, and that's devaluing as well in its own way. It's where I'd actually go and borrow money from somebody if I didn't have that, and I'd pay it back straight away to be able to go and get some petrol or something and go over there. Or the car we'd broken down on this one time, which is where I needed to borrow some money. And I don't borrow money from people. I don't have debt or nothing. And then just, you see how it ripples out. Anyway, right. I'm gonna call this a close right now. Thank you so much for listening. If you could please like this, I really would like to be able to talk more about this. And I'd like to be able to teach on this some more, but I, really feel the need to get this story out about what these other people have done and hopefully the things that you can relate to so again so i'm getting on with my life now but at this point now i really just want to reflect back to you and say hey this is what's happened and this happened to you as well and you're not alone on this so anyway if i ramble take care thank you ever so much take care bye bye